Bradshaw, and I'm standing in front of the beautiful Savannah River. And behind me is the Waving Girl Monument, in honor of Florence Martis. Let's learn more about her and her impact on Savannah's maritime history. The young lady who greeted the passing ships in Savannah, Georgia, was a real symbol of Southern hospitality. Day and night, she waved, welcoming, and bidding farewell to the hardworking sailors she encountered. Her cheerful efforts established her as an exciting part of maritime history, as well as one of the highlights of Savannah's coast. Florence Martis, also known as Savannah's Waving Girl, was born on August 7, 1869 in Cockspur Island, Georgia. Her father, John H. Martis, was a German-born ordnance surgeon at the island's Fort Pulaski, appointed to supervise fort repairs following its bombardment by the Union forces. After Florence was born, the Martis family moved back to nearby Elba Island, where her father assumed the lighthouse keeper's role. While living on the island, a powerful hurricane destroyed their home, forcing them to flee and settle in Savannah. Several years later, upon John Martis's passing, his son George took over as the lighthouse keeper. Both he and Florence moved back to Elba Island. Following their move, Florence began to stand at the Savannah River's edge and wave at every passing ship, a habit she maintained for 44 years. She would wave a handkerchief or towel during the day and a lantern during the nighttime. When ship captains spotted her, they would often acknowledge her by sounding their horn three times. According to the legend, not one ship was missed during the four decades she was on duty. In 1931, George retired and they both left the island. Florence Martis passed away in Savannah on February 8, 1943, three years after her beloved brother. The siblings were buried side by side in the northern portion of Laurel Grove Cemetery. Their headstone reads, in memory of the Waving Girl and her brother, keepers of the lighthouse on Elba Island, Savannah River for 35 years. Over the years, many have come up with fanciful explanations as to why Florence waved at the passing ships. Some locals claim that in 1887, Florence fell in love with a naval officer who sailed away but promised to return. To help him spot her, she started standing by the river and gesturing at the moving vessels. Although they were never reunited, she remained hopeful for the rest of her life, making sure he saw her if he ever came back. Although most would likely prefer the sad story, Florence herself claimed that she did it simply because she was lonely. She was a young girl living on an isolated island with nothing to do but stare at the water and wait for the ships to pass. During the early 1960s, a preservation movement swept Savannah, motivating locals to restore historic churches and houses that remained and were significant to the city. Part of this was restoring things significant to the city's waterfront. As part of this initiative, the city decided it would be appropriate to erect a monument honoring Savannah's Waving Girl, and funds immediately started to be collected. The process took several years, but finally, by 1968, the money was available to finance the project. The initial plan was to place the statue in Washington Square, which is part of Savannah's historic district. However, the community determined that the ground in the square could not support the monument's weight. Also agreed the statue would be out of place in the city center. The city concluded that the perfect location would be in Morrell Park on East River Street, overlooking the waterfront. Austrian-born Felix de Weldon designed the monument. De Weldon was a distinguished sculptor at the time, and he was best known for creating the Marine Corps War Memorial in Virginia. The sculptor's initial draft was modified based on the feedback he received from locals 
who wanted the monument to perfectly capture Florence's essence. The, the nine-foot-tall bronze statue stands on a large platform and depicts young Florence wearing a simple short-sleeved dress with both hands holding a flowing handkerchief. At her feet, the lantern she used to salute the ships at night can be seen. By her side, there's a collie representing the dog she and George bred on the island. Although the sculptor initially drew Florence barefoot, the artist modified the sketch to add a pair of shoes after a local store described the footwear Florence had purchased from them. The Waving Girl statue was cast in Rome, Italy and dedicated in 1972, a year after it arrived in Savannah. According to the locals, the captain who brought the statue refused payment because of the fond memories he had of Florence. To this day, some ships blow their horn to salute the monument when entering the Savannah River. After the Waving Girl's passing, the Propeller Club of Savannah named a Liberty ship after her. The SN's Florence Martis was revealed in 1943 with a massive celebration on Cockspur Island. According to the Georgia Historical Society, the SS Florence Martis was the 30th out of 88 Liberty ships built in Savannah. Throughout the years, these historic vessels have been scrapped, and only a handful remain today. The Savannah Bells ferry system that provides transport to several destinations across the Savannah River has four vessels in their fleet named after notable women of the city. One is named after Juliette Gordon Lowe, founder of the Girl Scouts of the USA. The second is named after Susie King Taylor, a free African-American woman who educated black soldiers during the Civil War. The third is named after Mary Musgrove, an American Indian who assisted General Oglethorpe during the founding of the Georgia colony. And the fourth is named after Florence Martis, Savannah's celebrated waving girl.